I guess you could say I bet on the wrong horse. On April 14th, 2022, Insteon went out of business, suddenly closed their doors, shut off their servers, and all these things around the world, which are Insteon hubs, and there's a little indicator light on there that went from green to red, indicating they had no connectivity. Aww. Now, whether you have a house full of Insteon devices or don't own a single one, this video will be useful to you because we are all at risk of the same issue. And I'm gonna explain why coming up. Welcome to Handy Dad TV. I'm Chris Heider, your virtual dad in the cloud. And today we're talking about Insteon. It is the best smart home solution that you've never heard of. And I don't know why they don't advertise it more, but. So what is Insteon? Well, it's, it's a proprietary technology for home automation, controlling your lights and other things. Now, what does proprietary mean? Well, that means they have a patent for the technology. And if you want to develop a device to work with Insteon devices, then you have to adhere to and pay them some kind of a licensing fee. Now, my entry into home automation was really slow. It was something called X10. X10 had these little plug-in modules that I could put all around my house wherever I had these lighted candles in my window for Christmas. And I had a timer that looked like a clock radio and it had little buttons on it and I could actually program all those devices would go on and off at the same time. The trouble is, as time went on, we had more and more devices that plugged in with power supplies like this, like computers and, and these things. And the trouble is, these actually absorb X10 signals, which were sent over their power lines. So that was a problem for me. So Insteon came along and they actually enhanced X10 by not only communicating over power lines like these things do, but they also had radio signals in them. Now, the other thing that really hooked me into Insteon was this thing. This device is an Insteon keypad dimmer. The cool thing about this is it replaces a dimmer switch in your house so it can control your kitchen lights or your chandelier or something like that. And you can use this to turn it on and dim it, but you can also, and that's only one button on here. The other seven buttons can be used to control other devices. So instead of having a big bank of eight switches, one single gang, switch replacement that has eight buttons on it and the buttons are lighted and they do things and it just really this was the best device that i ever found and i had several of them i think i had three of them in my house and when i moved i actually took them all with me so this switch right here used to just control my kitchen lights and so that's what the top button does so that's the kitchen lights on but if you can see here, that C button is lit. That C button stands for cabinet lights. That turns the cabinets on and off. But I also have an island. I have lights over my island and I can turn them on and off as well. And I have five other buttons on there that I haven't programmed yet because I was waiting to build out my Insteon uh, network throughout the house. So why am I sitting here with all these extra devices and I haven't installed them? That's a good question. Well, I had a relationship with smarthome.com, which is the retail arm for Insteon. And uh, turns out that they had a deal going with Nokia and they were supposed to bring out a whole new line. And so I was putting these on hold, waiting to hear what was going on with Nokia. In the end, Insteon went belly up and the Nokia deal is dead, as far as I can tell. Now, three things happened when Insteon went belly up. The servers were all shut off which meant connectivity to the Insteon hub died, which means you had no more access via the app or voice control or any other kind of integrations like that. Second, there's no more support. The company is closed, doors locked, employees sent home, that's it. Nobody's answering the 800 number. So if you just bought a whole bunch of Insteon devices and you need warranty support, sorry, but you're out of luck. And the third thing is manufacturing is done which means there are not gonna be any more Insteon devices ever produced. Now, that doesn't mean you can't get them. In fact, there's probably a very big secondary market right now. I thought these things would actually be cheap because nobody would want them. Well, I was wrong. It's actually the opposite. There are a lot of demand for them on eBay. So if you've got extra Insteon devices, now's a great time to sell them. Evidently, there are people that have spent tens of thousands of dollars 
automating their home with Insteon and they are scrambling to try and grab as many devices as they can because they know they're not going to last forever. So this one, brand new in the box, this is going to fetch more money than I paid for it. So let's talk about the lessons learned in this experience. The first is I'm going to try and avoid proprietary technology going forward. I'm going to stick with an open standard, something that I can get from various different providers and not just have to go to one company for support. The second is to find a smart hub that is not tied to a specific technology. You want one that can have multiple different types of protocols and speak to different kinds of devices if you want to change your mind down the road. Number three is to be aware of your provider's business model. That is, I didn't pay Insteon a monthly fee for the use of their servers. They were dependent on sales. Well, as sales began to slow down, that meant they were losing money because they still had to pay for all those servers and the people to support them. Guess what? That's not a sustainable business model. In fact, I have another device in the house that has the same risk. It's right behind me. This is my Ecobee thermostat. I have two of them in my house. I don't pay them a monthly fee either, but I am dependent on their servers, at least for some aspects. I have two of them in the house, one upstairs and one down here. They are cloud connected so that if I turn the heat off down here or I turn it to air conditioning, it does the same thing on the one upstairs. It does that through the cloud. In addition, I have an Ecobee app that I can use on my phone. I can change the temperature. I can check on things while I'm away. I can make sure the house is warm when I'm on my way home. All those kinds of things are dependent on their cloud servers. And because I don't pay any kind of a monthly fee to Ecobee, how are they supporting those servers? Well, through sales. But at some point, they may saturate the market and not sell any more of their technology. What happens then? I know we all like to complain about monthly fees, but think about it. Monthly fees provide a revenue stream to these companies that you depend on. Be aware of how your providers make money, okay? I don't worry about my Amazon Echo because that's a retail hub. They are selling products and they are earning money that way. But for other things like this, you've got to think twice about it. So if you're an Insteon user like me, what are you going to do now? Well, the first thing is don't panic. Your devices still work. If you've paired your keypads to your modules in the house and whatnot, you push those buttons and the lights will still go on whether or not you have internet or connectivity. You don't need the hub for that. Now, the second thing you can do is look for a third-party hub that actually works with Insteon. This one happens to be a Universal Devices, uh, also known as an ISY device, that is actually connected to an Insteon PLM, they call it, that's down there. PLM stands for a power line module, so that thing is actually what sends the signals to the other Insteon devices in the house. And so I've set this up just for the time being um, to make sure that my devices continue to work while I'm figuring out what I want to do next. Now you could actually wait and see what happens with the Insteon patents. When a company goes out of business, they owe money to their creditors, and so what the bankruptcy court will do is try to sell off their assets so that they can pay off those creditors. Well, their patents are an asset. So Nokia may still buy those patents and you never know what might actually come up that could be downwardly compatible with your Insteon devices. So the last thing you're gonna to wanna to do is actually plan your migration away from Insteon. The inevitable may happen. You may not be able to ever get another Insteon device. So when your stuff starts breaking, you're going to have to think about replacing it. The good news is you've got more choices. Now that could be a bad thing too, because you've got more choices. So you've got to go through that analysis and figure out what you want to do next. And I suggest, which is what I'm going to do, is find a hub that works with Insteon as well as other stuff so that I can migrate to other things in the future. I want it to be future proof. I do plan on doing additional videos on that topic, so please make sure you subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And leave me a comment. Let me know what your plan is. If you're an Insteon user, what kind of devices do you have in the house, and what are you doing in the interim, and where do you see yourself going long term? I want to hear your feedback. Leave me a comment below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and I will see you in the next one. If you are a DIY video creator struggling to find an audience, join Handy Dad TV and get instant access to an established audience that will provide more views and income than you're getting on your own. Just go to handydad.tv join for more information.